Hey, what's up, guys? How y'all doing today? Well, baby, if your name is Sean Diddy Combs, oof, I just feel sorry for you. Or more importantly, I feel sorry for Christian Combs. You guys, no sooner than Misa Hill and Brim literally told everybody, hold on, let me get this step. No sooner than Misa Hill and Brim, what is going on? Y'all know I ran to the setup, got cords hanging down and whatnot. No sooner did Misa Hill and Brim run to let us know how dare you go against these two innocent black men. Then we find out that Christian Combs is about to get new charges filed against them. This is an exclusive with the Jasmine brand, but you know, I stay with um, my finger on a refresh. You guys, this is breaking news. Christian Combs is, is being a... Uh, uh, can't even say it. Baby, the essay, everything is daddy did. Half the stuff is daddy dead. Christian is being accused of doing right now. You guys, let's get into this because honestly, did Misa know this was coming? Did Misa know this was a thing? Why didn't Misa say something about this? They talk about these are two innocent boys. If you guys don't know earlier, Misa Hill and Brim went on this whole rampage online about out of, out of, out of this, that, and the third. Um, the boys didn't deserve that. Diddy got disinvited from the Met. We're going to clown him about that, right? I think I know what got him disinvited from the Met. Did y'all see that video where Diddy was out in Miami on a dock? <laughs> Looking like he was smoking on some loud, hyping himself up, listening to probably some Daddy Yankee or some Pitbull. You know, that's the unofficial mirror of Miami. He was listening to Pitbull. Got some orange shorts on his dad, Bob, was swaying in the wind. And he was out there, like, doing all the moves, looking like somebody's grandfather. Like, I was like, Miami, if you don't get your pretend maybe man, he was out there hyping himself up, doing all the stuff. And um, both were even going by looking like, is that a crackhead? Because you know on Star Island, they not used to seeing stuff like that. They were like, is that the neighborhood crackhead? And Diddy was hyping himself up like, yeah, I'm still the king, still here, letting everybody know ain't nobody going to take him down. Ain't nobody going to slow him down. I know Ann Winter saw that whole scene and was like. Now, if we ban Kanye, we could damn sure ban Diddy. I think that's what got Diddy disinvited from the Met, moving all crazy, acting all crazy. And when Taw was like, baby, you can't come here no more. I think that's really what got uh, Diddy disinvited from the Met. Again, wh what is D Diddy's legal team? As much as Misa was screaming at the heavens, and I get it. She's a mom. Her baby is in deep trouble because of the father, right? And it's not like you ain't have a warning because when he got hit with the DUI, I guess the devil had him in the grass, right? She kept saying, how's everybody going to sit here and act like there ain't nothing wrong with Diddy six months ago. But now you're sitting here trying to rally the community around Diddy and around your baby. Who is Diddy's number two, right? You can't play that. Anyway, I did a rant, a video rant. If y'all want to hear my outrage, go ahead and uh, look at that. But we're going to talk about the way Christian... She said that Christian deserved having a, a, a Call of Duty 4 semi-glock. So, side note, before we get into these charges, let me just say this. Did I? Did y'all see the video that Misa showed where it's on her Instagram, where it was, I guess, security footage of the feds rolling up to raid? Didn't I tell you they was in that piece? Kicking the door, waving the 4-4. It looked like Call of Duty in that piece. Like when I say it was a full-on military occupation, or would it look like rolling at Diddy's house? Part of the reason they were squad deep is because Diddy's house is so big. You know that house that Ethiopia Haberman is now trying to say, what are you talking about? I've only been to Diddy for a backyard party. You mean the backyard that can hold three to 500 guests comfortably? The backyard that is bigger than most wedding venues? That backyard? Talking about it's a barbecue, acting like she at her granny's house. The one that everybody lived at before everybody made it. You know, the one where like five people was living in a one bedroom apartment and they had a little, like, shut up. Anyway, right? Um, Diddy got disinvited from the Met. I'll do a video about that because we got to clown him about that. Let's actually get to the serious stuff. So if you guys don't know, and again, this timing is 
impeccable chef's kiss, whatever. Misa had just posted the overzealous and over overtly militarized force used against my sons, Justin and Christian. It's deplorable. Misa, were you around during Black Lives Matter? And I'm not even being funny. We all know that the police force got militarized a long time ago. As a matter of fact, there have been protests. There have been um, petitions. There have been call your congressman. There have been a lot of stuff. I know Misa was busy being in her bubble, but people been talking about the way the police force, particularly the local police force and the feds have become overly militarized. But you ain't care until it came to your son. But, you know, let's keep going. She said if these were the sons of a non-black celebrity, they would not have been handled with the same aggression. So again, the argument that Misa is making, I believe on Diddy's behalf, is if these were white kids or Asian kids or whoever's kids, um, just non-black, accused of um, blank trafficking, they wouldn't have done this. I believe that if this was Steven Spielberg kids, they still would have done it. But if not, you can't do dirt. And then turn, that's like everybody stealing, right? And then being like, well, you ain't do that. Okay, but why were you stealing? Like, these are not DUIs. This is not traffic, like I said before. This is hardcore stuff. Anyway, she said, um, the attempt to humiliate and terrorize these innocent young black men is despicable. She put black men in uh, caps. Like I said in my video, you, Diddy, is being accused of humiliating and terrorizing black men, women. Um, and all sorts of races, but we'll just stick to black. She said, enough is enough. Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? I do want to say this. The police said that when the Fed said that when they raided, they found weapons with the serial number uh, filed off. Now, I don't know. Would you be running up in somebody's houses that one got weapons and two of the serial numbers? Now, I know they didn't know about the serial numbers, but they had gotten a bunch of tips. They expected to find weapons. They found weapons. They found weapons with the serial numbers. Like, again, Misa, what is you doing? But here's the thing that got me. Did Christian need a blank blank pointed at the back of his head while he was handcuffed? Um, The answer is maybe. The answer is maybe because the Jasmine brand is exclusively reporting that uh, the lawyer of the victim accusing Diddy's son of blank assault and her says, we have pics of my client's injuries. So the lawyer, right, that is also, rep let me make sure I got this right, to get this story right, because y'all know, y'all know, um, yo, Okay, here we go. Yep, it's the same lawyer that's representing Little Rod. So apparently Little Rod's lawyer, Tyrone A. Blackburn, according to the Jasmine brand, is also representing a young, I assume, woman, but you never know. You never know. A client and says they have pics of the injuries that they sustained while Christian Combs was doing what his daddy allegedly liked to do. Anyway, they said um, they exclusively report surrounding new allegations faced by Christian Combs uh, have been released. They said earlier today it was reported that Christian Combs is being named in a looming lawsuit accusing the rap star of blankly essaying and basically doing a ditty on a woman. In an exclusive statement to the Jasmine brand, attorney Tyrone Blackburn confirms confirms this and tells the tells Jasmine Brad that Diddy is aware of the lawsuit his son faces and Diddy's attorneys have also been informed. Uh, as Blackburn also tells Jasmine Brand that he has photos of his client's injuries and adds it will be filed in the coming weeks. Y'all, can you answer, can you riddle me this? Because I'm actually really, really uh, not concerned, but just taken aback. Mesa's putting all this energy in the screaming to the how to protect black men. Baby, get your babies away from Diddy. Right now, he is poisoned. Right now, he is hot. Even Hollywood, the same people that embrace Harvey Weinstein, has sh shunned him. Why do you got these your boys around them? Christian Combs, 
who has been on his Instagram story for the last weeks showing him drinking and smoking and token laid up and kissing up with his girl. Did he knew the whole time that he had charges against him for SA and did he did not try to settle? Did he did not try to do damage control? Did he just knew that all this was going on the same way? Did he, any idiot would know that Diddy's house was going to get raided. I know there's people on YouTube, Instagram, whatever. That's just like, oh, there's no proof. Shut up. When you hire a lawyer who is internationally renowned for um, international RICO, uh, terrorism, trafficking, and you know all this stuff is going on, it's not the point of whether you know for certain. It's the point of knowing that Ish could go down. At the end of the day, Diddy knows what he did. Now, you can argue. Whether it was consensual or not, I get that. But there is proof via video that the feds allegedly confiscated that something did happen. So if you know that you caught up in all this stuff, why would you have your baby slipping in the house? Why would you act like everything is cool? You got enough money. Well, according to the banks, you don't. But you you got enough friends that can loan places. Why don't you tell your kids to go stay at the Holiday Inn? Again, when you know it's just hot and when you know you've been involved with stuff and when you know all this stuff is in the lawsuit, why didn't you do more to protect your kids? But you got Misa out here screaming. Right. And Kamora Lee posting pictures of the baby trying to help Diddy rehab his image. But I'm not surprised because Kamora Lee stood by Russell Simmons side for so long. And the stuff we heard were not the first allegations. Right. By the way, did y'all know that Russell Simmons, who's been crying broke for all these years? Um, do you know he owns a resort, I think, out in Bali? Man, you can't trust these people. It is class solidarity. That's all I'm telling you. I do think that everybody that was in that circle, and this is my opinion, at that time, really went out of, like they were involved in some dark stuff and the people that weren't involved with it turned the other cheek. Again, where's the outrage for everybody else's kids that were terrorized? Honestly, seriously, a wake up broken dreams. Anyway, this is that Vibe had reported also that Christian Combs, Diddy's son is accused of blankly blanking and blanking a woman in a lo looming lawsuit. They said Christian Combs is reportedly being named in a lawsuit accusing Christian of blankly assaulting and blanking a woman. The lawsuit against uh, Christian, the son of the embattled rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs, has yet to be officially filed, but is currently in the works, according to attorney Tyrone Blackburn. The identity of uh, Diddy's alleged victims has yet to be revealed and details surrounding the reported lawsuit are sparse. While Christian has yet to address the allegations directly, he recently shared a post on social media that read, stop the cap, although he didn't give cap a context to what or whom he was referring to. I see he's going to his daddy's school of uh, public relations. Boy, I don't know if he knew he was facing these charges, but your daddy accused of this. You got... Another thing allegedly coming, according to Vibe and the Jasmine brand. Um, and all you can say is stop the cap. This is what you're doing. This is like, <laughs> this is like Diddy on the dock in Miami. I'm trying to find that video where he's dancing like he's on the Coca Loca, literally acting like he dancing to come on, baby, come on, baby, do the conga. Like, Diddy, sit down. You look insane, sir. We think you are the rap Jeffrey Epstein. And you are literally dancing around with your dad bod in some orange swim trunks. And this is the way. And, and when you're done, when you're done, you then put on. Um, a fresh Coogee sweater, whatever you talk, call it, and went down to the mall to hand out money. <laughs> it's giving guilty as hell. It's giving crack. It's giving like good luck buying your way out of this. But let's continue because, okay, the rapper who performs under the stage name King Combs has been romantically linked to multiple women during his time in the spotlight. Christian dated his ex-girlfriend, Bria Hicks, for several years and is currently dating model Raven Tracy, who recently got... Oh, this poor girl got Christian's name um, uh, tattooed on her body. Now, we don't know if these allegations are true, but at least his name is Christian... At 
at least his name is um um uh listen at least his name is christian so if he needs to all he needs to do is all she needs to do is take some roses and like, I don't know, some kittens and cover up half his name. And then it'll just say Christ. Matter of fact, put roses all around there and then you can just repent and be like, in love at Christ. You know, I don't know how she's going to uh, do that. Right. Um, I do know that let's get into this. Right. Um, listen, so Raven Tracy is probably gonna have to get a cover up tattoo pretty soon. And honestly, would she even be with him if he wasn't Diddy's son? And then that scares me because Raven, do you have a story to tell? Bria, do you have a story to tell? Have you been Diddied? If you have, uh, you know the lawyers to contact. Anyway, the claims made against Christian have been described as serious and thrust him into the vortex of shocking claims surrounding his father. As Diddy has been hit with several lawsuits in recent months, accusing him of blank assault, blank trafficking, blank abuse, and more. Uh, Blackburn, who has previously represented clients in litigation, is also the attorney uh, for Rodney Little Rod Jones, the producer who filed last month, Homeland Security, last month, baby, I love when, when, <laughs> when newspapers get in their bag, last month, you mean last week? but we are in April, uh, conducted raids on Diddy's properties in California and Miami, during which Christian and his elder brother Justin were detained and later released following the investigation. Now, what y'all think? What y'all think? How you feel about Misa screaming to the heavens now? Did Christian deserve to have that in the back of his head? Maybe. Did he? What is going on? All I can say with this is Diddy is ruining those kids' lives. And instead of people wanting to step in and actually protect people, they're literally screaming about trying to rally the black community to be like, do you guys not see what's going on? We're going to talk about the Christian stuff in a second. But do you got like, do you not see what's going on in the fact of Diddy was just po Christian was just posting up pictures on his Snapchat and on his Instagram pouring liquor down pretty young things' throats, doing this, doing that. I don't know. Is this really the time to do it? I was just texting my girlfriend about this. She's the one that sent this to me. What's up, Jamie? She was like, um, he might want to stop posting all that drinking and driving and looking, like, and looking like he's inebriated and maybe high as a kite on a Snapchat. They said, he, they said, poor boy copied his dad's template to get hired as the party boy because they look the same. But being that they are both probably on the same substances and he learned young and has always been rich. She said, child, his habits and attitudes are probably way worse than his daddy. Remember when Christian was also on was it Instagram or Snapchat? One of them talking about some gang, 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 throwing up like gang signs. Like, sir, you are from the Bel Air Academy. The Bel Air, and not the dram dramatized version of uh, 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 Bel Air, a Fresh Prince. No, no, the old school with Will and Carlton talking about some Sammy and the Seal. Like, what is going on in that house? Everybody wants to save the kids so bad, but nobody has the balls, the money, or the inclination to actually separate themselves. It's giving, you're fine when it happens to other kids. It's giving, you're fine when it happens to other women. It's giving, it is very self-serving, the outrage you want to have. You know, it's like, and I keep bringing this up with Kamora Lee. You talk about all the stuff that happened. You're mad that Usher is chilling on the island with Russell Simmons, a man that you were married for years to, a man that you protected the survivors, a man that you were fine with. When you got the money, Aoki, you were fine standing by your father's side. And ain't nobody shaming him. That's your father. But it wasn't until your father disrespected you that you wanted to go off. Because when the victims were st doing stuff, you were standing by your dad. But then when you saw he was a monster, now everybody got to hate him. And I'm not saying that we don't hate him. I'm just saying you guys are being very self-serving. In that same breath, Diddy, a man that is accused of doing worse than Russell Simmons ever could, a man that threatened Kimora while she was pregnant, a man that you know, well, I would assume you knew because you and Kim were like uh, sisters, was beating her down to the white meat, dog walking her, breaking her heart, doing all this stuff. People said he had her so messed up in the mind that that's one of the reasons that she was uh, 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 indulging, had 
her doing freak offs. You knew this. You were one of her closest friends, or at least you should have known this, right? But yet you up here doing damage control, posting Diddy's cute little daughter. Yes, we get it. The monster makes pretty kids. Can we move on? Like, honestly, I, I, I don't understand that. We're going back to eugenics. Ugly people do ugly things. Like, what is this? Yes, the monster, alleged monster, that's doing all this stuff can make a pretty baby. And you got Quincy and the baby being all cute together. Y'all think this is a coincidence? So a day after the girl, the little daughter is, or a couple, whatever, time frame, right? She's doing this. Young Miami on the boat, twerking, acting like nothing's wrong. Diddy up there on the pier in Miami, dancing like a crackhead in his, uh, 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 like, literally, if I didn't believe the rumors that Diddy was on something before, when I saw him dancing, like, he, like nobody was watching, why he had a camera crew filming him, I said, mm, it's giving crack. Mm. But we are not implying he is on crack. But I, if I didn't believe it before, I believed it now, right? Um... By the way, Diddy has maintained that he is 100% innocent and he looks forward to his day in court and he's going to prove he's innocent along with his four or five 5011 lawyers um, that are needed to prove his innocence. In any case, you know, so Diddy's out there dancing like no one's watching, right? They giving out money at the mall. His sons are flanking him. Young Miami is twerking on a yacht after you've been accused of being a freak off worker. And a thing, the a thing, Kamora Lee is now doing image rehab in my mind for Diddy posting his daughter after Diddy posts his daughter. I guess it's supposed to imply that they all spent Easter together. And if Kamora is still tight with them. Would there be a would she be tight with a monster? Yes, she procreated with a monster, alleged monster that just got served papers. She lived with a monster that just served papers. So, yes, I, I do 100 percent believe that. And why that's happening, Misa now says that she has a lawyer. I assume Diddy's trust. Who's who's paying for this? Justin's trust fund? I'm confused, right? Now Misa's talking about this is the thing. And then they keep trying to push that thing about black men. This is all I'm gonna say, right? Because y'all know I'm down, right? With all this stuff, when it's not involving a predator. I love black men. My daddy's a black man. Got black men all over my family. Yes, yes, yes. But there are very few things that will ever make me turn my back on the people I love. And the shit Diddy's accused of, baby, you on your own. I don't even want to know. But that said, my family's nosy. We would have known that mess was going down by jump. Somebody would have gotten like a, 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 a somebody would have gotten either my daddy yoking them up or they would have got my mom in the back of their head. Well, I don't think my family even would have got let it got that far. What you mean you having freak? What? I could just hear my mom. Yo, your aunt called me and said there was some, you needed some white fingernail polish why literally they were <laughs> from the back that is would have been nipped in the bud you know my dad used to always say when you see people doing crazy stuff they either don't got they either got they don't got enough money or they got too much when you hear about crazy mess happening it's either from people right that got too much money so they don't know how to act or they don't got enough money, so they don't know how to act. It's never in the middle. I don't know what that is. But all jokes aside, everybody is moving to protect Diddy. Is that because that's where the money resides? And nobody's talking about the victims. And everybody's being self-serving. But like every self-serving, and I will say this, self-serving person. It's like when you see a rich, a billionaire, <gasps> protect women. Women do need to protect it. You, a billionaire, I think you'll be okay. <laughs> black men. I protect the black men that need protecting. The people that are pulled over in a random traffic stop while they're trying to get to work and they're hardworking and this and that. You are not going to sit here and play in our faces and mobilize the black community card when you are being accused of so many egregious things. And it's not just accused. If it was just the government accusing, y'all moan me. I would roll my eyes because the government does put 20 on 10 when it comes to black people. They do. But it's not the government just, it's the streets. The government has this case because the streets been talking and the streets have been saying over and over 
and over and over what Diddy was into. And now that we're finally truly listening to the streets, it's the same narrative over and over and over. So if we heard that and we're hearing it years later, what the hell did you see, Misa? You was cool with Kim. You was cool with Sarah, Kimora. Why you want to put the baby up on the screen? Why don't you, what did you see? What did you witness? What did Kim tell you? What happened? Hmm? So we hear all that mess. That would have meant that y'all, even if you didn't want to believe it, people would have came back and told you shit. So if they came back and told you shit, why are you now acting morally outraged? That Why would you have your baby around that? Why did you let Diddy take over as a father? Why? You knew he was a danger. Everybody did. You even posted about that. Kamora tag teamed and joined in. And all of a sudden, y'all sitting on mute? Why y'all sitting on mute? Because you guys have ulterior motives. But then it calls into question, is the ulterior motives really about Diddy? Or is it about the people Diddy serves? Because at the end of the way, as much as people want to laugh at conspiracy theorists, right? And all that other stuff. At the end of the day, there are people that are more powerful and more influential and people that you guys need to kneel in front of. And that's how it comes to you're doing what you can to protect Diddy. I do believe this, right? I heard that the feds raided Diddy's house so they could destroy information. I don't know. I'll put it like this. That could very well be true. But Diddy's going down. And anyone that's dumb enough to try to jump in front of what's coming and save him is going down too. You see, I do think that 2024 is like the year of truth. I do believe that what's done in the dark is now coming to light. We're not talking about stupid, like, credit card fraud. We're not talking about somebody beating somebody. We, no, we are talking about, do you know how dark it is, the things that this man is being accused of? And everybody's saying that there's been proof for years. I pity anyone that would be dumb enough, either for self-serving, either for mother's love, uh, to jump in front of what's happening to try to stop it. Because that's one thing that people have said about Diddy. You don't become a billionaire, whether fake or whatever, by being an honest, hardworking person, baby. He will use anybody as a shield. And the fact that Misa up here screaming, you can't, you got to look at things. Why did all these reports come out at the same time? And why is it that this seems to be Diddy's next thing with his lawyers? And if it works, I am literally going to just literally just be like, I'm done. I mean, I can't be done being black, but y'all get what I'm saying. If this little thing works about oh, he's only being targeted from a black man, it's the same defense that Bill Cosby's lawyer work used. Like, are you serious? Now we got to defend. It's bad enough that we out here marching and defending the people that deserve it. Now we got to defend a predator so he can ravage through the communities just because they're the same complexion. Man, if you don't get out of here. you And also, where's Janice Combs? We see Misa out here looking the fool. Come on, where's Janice? We all know that, listen, Lady Mount Vernon, Janice knows what she's doing. Janice knows what she's doing. Janice being real quiet about now. Just super, super, super quiet. Anyway, y'all, let's get into, oh wait, really quick. There's new accusations also coming up. We're going to talk about that in a second. Outside of Christian. But we're also going to talk about what we know about Christian and uh, the people, right? Um, uh, listen, listen, um, listen, <clears throat> one second, guys, where are we at? So vibe has the, uh, what is it? I just had that story. Um, Okay, so anyway, Vibe has a story. Really quick, Larry Love, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Larry Love again says, T says the truth. Like, follow, love, and share. Oh, yeah, can you guys get a like? If you, if I can get enough likes, I'm going to go live tomorrow three times. Now, some of you guys might hate my guts, and you might be like, let me take my like back. But I'll go live three times if I get enough likes. 
Um, I'm just joking. You guys know I'm not going to hold you guys hostage. I would appreciate you guys liking it, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go live three times tomorrow anyway. Anyway, um, mixed chick Samantha. What's up, Samantha? Said Diddy's twin. Dear law, call 1-800-I-GOT-DIDDY. Just crazy. Exactly. Woo. Who else has something to say? Uh, Just Real Beauty by K. Marie. Thank you so much for joining the memberships. Um, DRKN Darkin says uh, she was trying for years to get her son Justin back, but did he threaten and beat her? She was left homeless. She was sleeping in the car. She doesn't want her son to go to jail. Now, here's the thing. I don't mean to be too hard on Misa. I know, of course, mothers love all this stuff, but that stuff happened in 2002, 2004. We are in two. 2024. That happened 20 years ago. And Misa had been very, very, very cozy with Diddy. And here's all I'm saying, right? Go ahead and rep your set. Protect your son. I get it. I get it. I get it. But why was all of these women that stand next to these monsters quiet? Like, this is one of the reasons why you think it took Cassie so long to speak out. And everybody else that was courageous enough. It's not just the men. It's the people, the men and women around them. And a lot of times it's the women that's standing right next to them that's doing all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Maja Keys said, anyone reached out to Little Kim? I always thought uh, that the time Little Kim did Little Kim did in Federal was behind Diddy because she said she wouldn't stitch thoughts. Maja, I do have thoughts on that. First of all. Have y'all ever noticed any Biggie's lyrics? Because let me find out they was in that. Now, listen, if any of y'all are really, uh, 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 if any of y'all are really Biggie fans, you're going to have to shut the F up for five minutes because, baby, we're going to expose your king. Um, I'm going to read some lyrics that are really questionable. I do know that, uh, well, based upon information, at least what the streets are saying and gossip, that Biggie used to beat the F out of little Kim and little Kim when she was younger was the doll. She was so gorgeous. She even had this beautiful, unique heart shaped face. Little Kim was the doll, but they made her feel so ugly, so disgusting. So this it's so funny about in New York at that time, everybody wanted like a Misa or a mixed girl or half Asian or a Kimura or, you know, just not like a Charlie Baltimore, right? But Little Kim, if you lived outside of America at that time, and that's the problem, was no Instagram. Little Kim didn't know how loved she was, what a sex symbol she was, the way every boy from Poland down to Italy go by way of Milan, then land in Germany, had a picture, and, and in the Midwest, had a picture of Little Kim squatting down when, oddly enough, she was just a baby. I think she was 15 or 16 when that picture was taken. When she was a bona fide sex symbol, she was a symbol of beauty. You see the way Eve went over to UK and married like Maximilian and whatnot. She was such a, she was a sex symbol, beautiful sex symbol, right? But because in New York at that time, the girls that looked like little Kim, that looked like little Kim didn't rank because she ain't have good hair. She wasn't light bright. She wasn't blazing. She wasn't this. She was made to feel like she was ugly. So in my opinion, she went through so much unnecessary and unwarranted plastic surgery because they made her feel like she was just an ugly monster, not worthy of love. On top of Biggie and his ugh, ugh, never claiming her brutal beatings, all this stuff. I do believe, I, and also when little Kim went to jail, she literally was so hurt because she said Puff never, ever, 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 ever checked up on her, ever. That's who he really is. And little Kim stays silent. When you don't even have to ask, did you get taken through some mess? You can see on her face the way she mutilated herself, mutilated herself, where her self-love was um, uh, in that moment. And uh, <clears throat> uh, listen, uh, yeah. So you can actually see it. So that's my opinion on what happened with the Little Kim stuff. Oh, that's what it was. I wanted to read y'all some biggie lyrics because it made me think, how long they been having uh, free calls? Where is it? I took some screenshots because it was actually really good. But I also took some screenshots because I was like, I can't read this aloud. Hold on, y'all. Let me go to my screenshots. This is really good. Just give me a, give me a second. All right. Let me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook. Um... Wait, it's on this phone. Y'all know I always come not 
No, I am prepared. I'm speaking life into myself in 2024. But yeah, that's why I honestly think that little Kim is. I think that's what happened with Diddy. And I think that a lot of these girls that were married to these monsters, if they weren't victims themselves, they stood by and watched, right? Misa got away from Diddy. Kimora stood by Russell, defended him, so did the whole family until he turned on them. And then Kimora's new man is a piece of crap, stood by him, right? And now you're standing by Diddy. Man, they did. Listen, they said fans are shocked. This is from College Kid with a K, College Kid on Twitter. He, they said fans are shocked to discover Biggie's most sus suspect lyrics amid the Diddy controversy, right? Here's one. I'll F RuPaul before I F them ugly A escape Bs. You can sit 76 to 69, try 68. Make Raven Simone call date. Make it rhyme. So in one lyrics, everybody was just like, ooh, right? He called Escape Ugly, which I would just have to say, imagine the misogyny that was in hip-hop at that time. That biggie, cockeyed, cross-eyed, right? Biggie was sitting there calling somebody ugly. And being cross-eyed wasn't the only thing wrong with them. Shut up if you're a Biggie fan. You're going to have to hear the truth about your Kang tonight. Please release thy ego and submit to what we're doing with Biggie's lyrics. He also said he's going to make Raven Simone call date. Mm. I do not believe Raven Simone was even 18 when he made those lyrics. Another one. Ninjas press the luck and they get a butt effing. Straight up the A, raw dog with the rash. Y'all think they was having free calls? Do y'all think? Ninjas press their luck and they get a B effing. Straight up the A, raw dog with the rash. Ugh. Yuck. Anyway, here's another one. When I met you, I admit my first thoughts was the trick. You look so good, huh? I'll suck on your daddy's. Now, somebody in the comments had the nerve to say, y'all so stupid. He's quoting a joke made by Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor used to say, you look so good. I'll suck your daddy's. But if you read the biographies of the women that actually dated Richard Pryor, you would know that Richard Pryor was a proudly bi man. So when he made that joke, I'll suck your daddy's mmm, Richard Pryor was speaking truth to power, if you will. So I know somebody thought they ate by being like, y'all so stupid, y'all don't even realize that's a Richard Pryor joke, to which I will say, well, I wasn't, I wasn't typing, I was just in the comment section lurking, y'all know me, minding my business, being nosy. And I was like, and you so stupid, you don't even realize the context of why Richard Pryor made that joke and why it was funny. Anyway, right? Last one. Don't they know my ninjas gutter effing? Kidnap kids, huh? F them in the A. Throw them over the bridge. Ooh. Now, I will say, I was never a fan of Biggie. Um, I really like Tupac and his flow. You know, he could be party. He could be grimy. But then sometimes he would speak on social issues. Brenda has a baby. And I ain't mad at you and uh, dear mama. And even when you're a crack fiend, mama, you was always a black queen, mama, right? Got to play that every Mother's Day, right? Like your mom looking like, who you calling? You right? Like your mom is like, I can't relate. I was never a crack fiend. Anyway, Biggie Rap, don't they know my, my ninja's gutter effing? Kidnap kids. F them in the A. Throw them over the bridge. Ooh. I don't know. What y'all think Diddy and Puffy was into? And what do you think that little Kim had to actually put up with? Let's also not forget that Diddy was obsessed. We're going to get into the Christian Comb stuff in a second. We're just going off on a tangent, right? You know, Super Chat. So do that to me, right? Um, also, can you guys hit the like and subscribe button? I would really appreciate it. I'm going live a lot tomorrow. So hit your notifications. Um, baby. Yeah. We're going to have a freak. We're going to have a Diddy freak off <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, but all jokes aside, um, 
Let's also not forget that Diddy seems to be obsessed with bagging any woman a man close to him wanted. So even if he didn't like Little Kim, um, something tells me that just because Little Kim and Biggie had something that he would have wanted to sample the goods. Now, I don't know. I don't have any proof. I'm just going based upon information and belief. And if the past is any indication um, of the future, and it definitely um, uh, uh, tells the history of the present, I would think that was true. And I think Little Kim got some stories uh, to tell big time. Uh, call me Emmy. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships. Greg Majori, thank you so much for the super chat. Monty Key said, uh, speaking of Russell, do you think that Usher tipped the government off from Russell's exact location in Bali? Funny that he was served after Usher's visit. You know what? If he did, then we take back everything we said about Usher Raymond. Well, mm, I take back mm, 20 Mm, 7.5% as the things I've said about Usher Raymond on this channel. And we owe Usher an apology because it is funny that after Usher's trip, he got served. But it could just be people being stupid. But you know what? You're right. Listen, I want Usher to be innocent, but um, I don't know. That was a lot because if Usher knew where Russell was and Usher went on a vacation to see Russell, then Usher just could have given the address to the process servers and just skipped over everything. Also, Russell Simmons is not technically in hiding. He owns a resort. That ro yoga retreat he has, he owns a resort and he's been crying broke. He'd be making his money. I want to know who are the weirdos going to that resort. I hope they are overseas because everybody in America knows what's up with Russell Simmons. Also, Amaya, the Amaya experience said Jasmine Brand say, saying Christian got a victim and a lawsuit breaking news. Thanks, Amaya. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Amaya. Uh, yes, we will get back into that. But I know I'm reading everything out of order, but thank you, Amaya. Perfections by Stormy said, oh, thank you for gifting a membership. Um, but you know what? You know what? Actually, thank you, Amaya. Thank you, because you're right. I could have been on live talking about anything. So you know what? Thank you for looking out. Thank you. I beat you to it. But girl, thank you for looking out. I really do appreciate that. Um, Maja Key said, Diddy is putting batteries in all their backs. And it's crazy that Misa is upholding her son the same way she just ranted about others doing the Diddy when she was mad with them. Double standards here. Again, I don't even think it's a double standards. I think it's very self-serving. It's not double standards. Double standards is when... You hold one people. Well, technically it is double standards, but I think it's just also self-serving. They clearly just don't care about anything or anyone unless it affects them personally. And fortunately for them, for most of their lives, Diddy's money, no matter how he got it, and the feds got some ideas on how he got it, allowed them to think that way and insulate themselves and do all that. So at the end of the day, it is what it says, right? Now get this. Uh, paperwork party says, according to court documents, Sean Combs was working as an informant for FBI special agent Mark J. Parody out of the New York FBI field office. Um, an FBI agent wrote an affidavit detailing Sean Combs arrest in 1995, which was later dismissed in 1996 pursuant to Pete Diddy's cooperation. This case had been sealed for 30 more years. Y'all, we're going to have to talk about this. We're going to have to talk about this. You know what? Should I put this in a different live? Should I talk about this in this live or do a different live? Like get off live. Or y'all want me to talk about it here? Do y'all want me to talk about it here? Let me change the, my title if you do. Um, let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Diddy exposed as informant. Okay. I hope that makes sense to y'all. Anyway, are we on there? Do you guys also, I have right now 1,000, I'm sorry, 12,232 people in the chat. And I just looked as I changed my title and saw that there are only 2,658 likes. Why are y'all doing this to me? Why are y'all doing this to me? Why are y'all doing this to me? Oh, this is the most abusive relationship. 
And I can't quit you guys. This is abusive. Anyway, y'all, um, can y'all hit the like button, please? I would appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to get into the Denny Farmant stuff really quick. But also, uh, Corey says, Danny Boy knows some ish also. Mary J. Blige had relations with him when he was 16. I believe that. Wait, wait, 16? Oh, uh, uh, I, I'm going to have to research that. Uh, Trina, thank you so much for becoming a member. We got Shawnee Ann. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, uh, Angelica v uh, Vasquez says, there's a tape of Biggie on his knees for Diddy, allegedly. I would, Listen, after those lyrics, I wouldn't doubt it. Both repubs and dims hate black people. You know, you know. Said, uh, why do you hate black men so much? Black men get your passports. <laughs> Black men get your passports and find a non-black woman. These black women wonder why they're the least married group. <sighs> Spoken like a man that lives in his mama's basement and is still waiting for UPS to call him back for a job interview. And it ain't no shade to your mama's basement or UPS. It's shade to you. Y'all, this is the type of people that Misa is trying to organize. Baby, black men get your passports. Well, baby, the black men I know can find women in the U.S. They cool. They're wanted. They're actually lifted up and find a non-black woman. Baby, let me tell y'all something. Tell me you ain't never been off of your mama's couch without telling me you and you're not. The fact of the misogynoir of saying that there's something wrong with black women, but also the arrogance and stupidity to think that you going over to a third world nation or first world or developing nation or whatever and finding because a woman is non-black, you've been watching all these misogynistic things about what Latina woman catered to the woman, Asian women are meek and submissive. Baby, find you a Latina and an Asian woman and pull this shit and say this shit and watch you come back home, but ain't nobody going to want you. So you know what? We are just going to skip over that. But thank you for that $4.99. You probably should have saved it for your passport money. Find a black man. man. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's like, but go ahead. Because I feel like people that read those, leave those type of comments. I'm being serious because you ain't taking no sweat. You, baby, I don't got, we don't got problems finding any man of any nation. <laughs> but I find that the men that leave those comments, um, and it's not just black men, it's all men. And they're like, oh, God, find yourself. I don't think they're looking for a partner. I don't think they're looking for anybody to treat well. I think that they look at Diddy and they admire what he was able to do, the evil he was able to create. But they work at Chick-fil-A. I'm sorry, Chick-fil-A does pay $15 or $18 an hour. They can't get a job at Chick-fil-A. They work at Church's Chicken um, uh, in a state that only has a minimum wage for like $6 an hour, right? They work in a minimum wage job and they want to be able to coerce, abuse, defile. That's because that's the thing when people be like arguing with these people, men, whatever, of every race, passport, get yourself out of there. It's like the people in UK or whatever that's just like, you know, they're Brits. Brits, get your passport and go down the valley, go down the here. Why? So you guys can do blank tourism. So you can go exploit and hurt and harass and abuse these. Uh, uh, men and women because you're not allowed to prey on the people in your country because you don't have enough assets or power in your country. But if you take your little, um, uh, your little pensions check, Charles, and you fly over to Bali from the UK, your pensions check might just be paupers and you can't do anything but eat your beans and toast in your little cold apartment in the UK. But you go out down to Bali, you go down to Thailand, you go down to all these places and all of a sudden you have the money to be able to exploit people. Same thing with these passport bros. It's like, go, right? But on the other hand, you're teaching that you, and again, if you're just going and you want to meet other cultures, other people that, okay, fine. That's a passion for traveling. That's seeing people. But when you're like, oh, you need to go do this. You really honestly are mad that you work at Church's Chicken and you don't have the power, the respect, the money, the swag, the face, whatever it is to lure people in and be a predator like Diddy is. So you want to go to a, a nation that's developing 
um, a nation that's developing and try to find people that are starving or oppressed or whatever's going on, they're willing to put up with your demonic ways. And that's sick. It's sick. And the fact that you think it's a flex, it shows you're stupid. So the good thing about sick people who are stupid is that you will get caught and you'll get caught before you know it. See what they did over in Colombia. See what they did over in Colombia and in Brazil when they thought you was going to run up on there and be doing that. Good luck to you, dummy. Anyway, right? Anyway, let, let's, let's, I will always say, I thank God that most depraved people don't have got the, the good sense God bore. They, they, they're just dumb because they're not more dangerous than a very intelligent depraved person. That is when things get scary. But thank God they're mostly stupid. They're dumb. Anyway, y'all, right? Listen. Yeah, you know, it's like, listen. No, 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 no. But it's not that I'm spending too much time. I'm not trying to clown this person. I don't care about him. My issue is the fact that we need to be aware. I have a bigger point, okay? We need to be aware that there are ditties in every bracket, every social income, every social economic income, every race, creed, and color. 2024 is the year of the truth, and you need to keep your eyes open. Because why we look at Diddy and we're like, oh, see what happened with money. But what's going on with other people that you might work at the same job, but they got something going on in their personal life that is very, very familiar. Money is the quickest way to get somebody to submit. But sometimes they use physical abuse. Sometimes they use mental abuse. And the whole goal is to be depraved and defile people. So while we're shocked at what's going on with Diddy, I would reckon that there's like a hundred, maybe even thousands of more ditties happening in different areas. It's not just with the very rich, but by dethroning the very rich, by dethroning them and having public outcry. And that's why the very rich always try to be like, oh, stop with cancel culture. Don't listen to anybody that says that because it's like, yeah, there's something wrong with you too. And we dethrone the very rich and we show at the very top of the pyramid that that is unacceptable and it will not happen. Then when you get down the other deviants that don't have enough money or whatever to do it, they'll think twice before they start that stuff. Because if even the people at the very top are held accountable, what do you think is going to happen to you? If your church is chicken check, that ain't enough for legal aid. You know the way those, you know the way those legal aid uh, attorneys go. But y'all get what I'm saying, okay? Y'all get, uh... oh my God, this is breaking news. Remember when I talked about, um... hold on. Remember when I talked about uh, Mies and Helen Brin and we were like, oh, well, if she's the mother, this is a coordinated PR attack, I believe by Diddy's people to kind of clear his name and shift the narrative. This is the freak off Avengers, if you will, because uh, 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 Stevie J just did an interview with TMZ with the exact same talking points. The only difference is there's a video floating around. Remember that video that happened like two years ago where during the pandemic when... Um, God. Remember when uh, Diddy uh, uh, literally did um, uh, Diddy did the one second, guys. Okay, so remember when Diddy did uh, it was quarantine and Stevie J did like an interview, right? Remember when he did all that and then all of a sudden he was in, uh, the girl was interviewing him and he was getting sloppy toppy um, uh, from a girl in uh, the bed, or at least it looked like. And y'all remember that interview, right? He was being interviewed by some woman and she said she felt like um, super uh, uh, just disrespected. And it was just weird. That just showed that Stevie J was like a dirt scum slime ball, right? Um, Right? So anyway, one second. So anyway, uh, okay. 
sorry, just doing that. So anyway, he was like being taken back and all this other stuff. Okay. So it seems like, um, in that video, you could hear him and he literally said, so he's on star Island and he was at Diddy's house. And it looked like he was just waking up from a freak off. Right. This is one of the, uh, uh, it was one of the things that Stevie J was just doing. Anyway, now Stevie J is on TMZ giving videos, basically giving the same talking points. Do you know how down bad you have to be that a scumbag, a scumbag, like Stevie J is the only person coming out defending you? Let me get this straight. You got Kamora Lee. You got Misa. You got Stevie J. This is what? The freak off Avengers? This is the best you got? This is what's going to change public opinion. I see why they disinvited you from the Met Gala. We see everybody whose money is tied to Diddy in some way, shape, or form is coming out swinging, defending this bad. Listen, Stevie J is referring to himself as a firsthand witness, and he's at the Star Island home. He was at the Star Island home at the time of the raid, so he must live there. That's right. Diddy keeps the people close to him close. Let's see what Stevie J got to say. Hold on. Whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that I've never seen my man doing anything foul like they're talking about. None of it. All of it. I, I mean, I, you know. I, I've never seen it. I've known him for 29 years. And then can I just say something? This is the best. This is going to jail. This is the best you can do. I've never seen it. Have you been in the bedroom? Stevie J says, did he just out himself? Stevie J just announced that in the 29 years he's known Diddy, he ain't never seen Diddy do any of the foul stuff that they're talking about. Stevie J, were you in the bedroom with him? How would you know what's going on in the bedroom? Were you invited to every sexual experience he had? Are y'all inseparable living at the hip? Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Hold on. Like 50, you know what I'm saying? Like Uncle Tom cats like that. You know? 50s and Uncle Tom cat. Dirt resident sleaze ball dirt bag look just dirty, nasty, disgusting, and just grimy. There's something wrong with them. Stevie J is calling 50 cents an Uncle Tom. That's right, Stevie, because real ninjas wear white nail polish and do freak offs. Man, hold on, we're about to get back into this thing. B, thank you so much for gifting a membership. Maria M said, you're killing it with the Diddy content. Thanks for all the quality content. Oh, thank you. Love your humor and intelligence. Thank you, Maria M. I'm sorry, Marie M. Um, also, Renee Robinson, hit that like button. Thank you so much for the super chat. Shannon, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, also, Perfections by Storm said, thank you for that wonderful response to the ignorant comment. You're welcome, Storm. Also, Omni Harrell Pep said, they're either married or in, or in the marrying position. Obviously not you, sir. No passport needed. That's right. That's right. Angelica Vasquez says, if you got to travel for Gucci or booty, then you're the problem. I know that's right. Also, Mixchip Samantha said, he needs to use his passport to get with William. Big dumb. Exactly. Um, Z says, Misa can blame the diddler, not her defending the man that beat you so bad you had to run and hide under a car. A black billionaire is the most racist in the most racist country in the world has no excuses. Let me tell you something. They're trying to say that Diddy is only a billionaire on paper. Also, exclusive TV said Mr. C's was big DJ. Check his story out. I will. DJ King, thank you so much, said. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, DJ King, for the super chat, said he's probably another Diddy. B said, black women are the most desired and sought out. Loved your response to that dummy. Your work as is a match. Keep up the cell work. Thank you so much. And Lindick says, what's the update on Russell Simmons? Already, he was served legal papers. He will. Here's the smart thing about Russell Simmons before we get back in the Stevie J interview, right? Um, uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so anyway, getting back to what I was saying. Oh, so he was served legal papers, but this is how it's so brilliant. So you know that once you're served, right, 
you go to court. And even if you don't show up, you can be convicted in absentia. Once you're convicted in absentia, that means that you weren't actually there, right? You can petition the court if you are convicted and there's enough evidence, you can petition the court to attach um, your money holdings or whatever. So by Russell not showing up, and you know he ain't showing up, basically what's going to happen is that woman is going to be able to get whatever judgment by attaching Russell's assets. And Russell does still have assets in the U.S., and more importantly, he has assets because he bought a resort in Bali, even though he's trying to play broke. Anyway, y'all, that's what's going on. Also, Ellen27, uh, thank you so much for the super chat. And Mixed Chip Samantha said, yo, did this dummy Stevie would sound sweet with his rap face got years on love and hip hop being a liar? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you're, uh, you, what is this? Jeremiah Israel. Uh, thank you so much for... Jeremiah, is it Jeremiah or Jeremiah? Israel, thank you so much for uh, the uh, super chat. Okay, right? So where are we? Uh, listen. Again, who is it? What's his name? Is given uh, is giving an interview in Diddy's Star Island house. Listen, he refers to himself as first hat and witness. He's at the Star Island home at the time of the ra at the time of the raid. Okay, so he must live there. He said the feds took all the security footage. Well, it makes me wonder how on earth Misa Hilton got a hold of security cam footage of inside the LA house during the raid. Did they miss the camera? Let me tell you another thing about the security footage. There's two types of security footage, right? When you have a high tech security system. There's always two recordings. There's one recording that is on the property, but there's also a backup recording that goes into the cloud, okay? And Diddy, Misa, and even Stevie being like, they took all the tapes. They didn't physically take the tapes. Like this is like 1989, Agatha Christie or Murder, She Wrote. It just means that they took the physical copy from there. They took the things that hold the physical copy, but there's also a cloud. The same way that if somebody, um, oh, okay, B, the same way that if somebody um, steals your iPhone, right? You can be like, yo, they stole all my, they stole all my pictures, right? But at the end of the day, hold on, I'm just going to slow down the chat one uh, minute only to subscribers only, uh, because we just have to get uh, some stuff taken out, all right? But I'm just going to slow down the chat for one minute to subscribers only, okay? You can just hit the subscribe button, and then you can pop in the chat, but it needs to be subscribers only, okay? We have to get some riffraff out. But the same way if I steal your iPhone, right? Did I steal all your pictures? Yeah, technically. But you also have backups into the cloud. That's the way these high-tech security systems go. So for Misa and Stevie and all these people to be put, they took all the tapes. The tapes were already in the cloud. I mean the actual cloud, not like the mainframe servers that were on Diddy's thing. So it makes you wonder, how did Misa, she posted also on her Instagram, uh, the feds coming in and using brutal force. But you got that from Diddy's security tapes. Did you not? Did you not? Did you not? Right? They didn't miss cameras. They know what they're doing. This is, in my opinion, this is all a PR thing so we can get sympathy for Diddy. Okay? Again, it was uploaded, in my opinion, on the cloud. But Homeland Security made a big deal about leaking to the press how they disabled the security cam system before they entered. Clearly, they're saying Homeland Security missed some cameras and security footage because they would they shouldn't have access to that type of video. They're saying with Misa. Um, I think what happened is Homeland Security, well, yeah, they did disable some of the stuff, but also I do think that, and this is important to know, when they rushed in, because this is a military operation, they already knew the blueprint of the house. They had enough people, and that house was so big. That when they busted in, they swarmed the house like ants on a three-day-old honey bun, right? Some of them went straight to the security. Some of them went straight to the th rooms. I'm sure they even had like little heat systems so that you can tell where bodies are in the house. Again, this was a military-style raid. 
So they knew where all the living people were by like, you know, the infrared heat system. They swarmed it. They all spanned out, accomplished their target. That means that while they were disabling the security footage, they had already run up into Justin and into um, Christian's rooms. Okay. Anyway, right? Also, they also... If you guys watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, Peter Thomas actually spoke out. He said, uh, he mentioned on his IG how they used armored tanks to bust down Diddy's Star Island gates. It was just so suspicious how all of these same talking points are happening on the same day. And it's also interesting and really funny that these, these dirt bags, I'm not talking about Misa, but Stevie J, these dirt bags. Right. And Peter Thomas is speaking out today, too. I'm not saying he's a dirtbag, but we know he's broke. Right. <laughs> According to that nine million dollar judgment or how much he owes are now all coming out to speak on Diddy's behalf, all in a coordinated effort on all the same day. Y'all, you can't make this mess up. You really honestly can't. Ellen. Uh, 27, thank you so much for the super chat. It's Mimi said, keep up the excellent journalism. Thank you, it's Mimi. And thank you for that generous super chat. Also, Mixshift Samantha said, feds use brutal force. Um, I think she meant to say Diddy. That's true. Now, here's the thing. The feds do be putting 20 on 10 and they do use brutal force. But that's for someone that like, you know, little minor charges. Diddy, you're accused of blank trafficking and the streets are saying that it's true. So, oh no, I don't know. Jessica Reyes, thank you so much for becoming a member. And Ellen H27, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it so much. Okay, so let's jump back into here and see what we got. One second. Listen. Oh, my God. One second. Anyway, let's go. So in any case, I think the best thing to do, listen, can you guys hit one second. I'm getting more information. Also, you guys, make sure you turn on your subscriptions and so or subscribe so you can get your notifications. I'm going live three times together. You know, three times tomorrow, you know I'm gonna dig down and see what's going on with Christian Combs and with all that mess. All right. It is what it is. I do want to also say this, you guys, and this is important to know. In the coming days, and this is just what I've noticed from like following gossip and scandals and all this other stuff, right? In the coming days, please listen when I say, ignore the trolls. When you see an organized PR effort, you know they don't just leave it with that, right? You know that they actually hire uh, troll farms and bots to jump into comment sections, whether it's the shape room, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, whether it's even here to say the most outlandish things. Free Diddy, save Diddy. Why would you say that about black men? They literally have farms of people usually that work in uh, either Southeast Asia or India. Why do I say that? Because they have huge, or Latin America, they have huge farms of people that their job is. And when I say huge, I mean like call centers that employ 5,000, 10,000, Huge amounts of people, right? And they all, their job is to sit there and make, and they get a script of things to drop in, talking points. And that's why when you're on different people's pages, you're reading the comment section, you'll be like, yo, why is everybody saying this about Diddy? Why is everybody saying this about this? They are paid trolls. They are not real people. Ask yourself why. Up to this couple of weeks, everybody's been against Diddy and clowning Diddy. And now you look in the comment section and there's all these people defending Diddy like his life depended on him because they are not real people, because they are paid to say this. You cannot pay these trolls any mind. The same thing that happened with the Johnny Depp trial, the same thing that's happening with every trial. Lawyers and defense, they are very smart, okay? They know how to pay people to go in to try to make you think, oh my God, the narrative is changing. It's not changing. Everybody still thinks what they think. Do you know what I'm saying? If you want to see the real truth, go over to TikTok because TikTok really is the voice of the people. You can really see what people believe on TikTok. And baby, in TikTok, nobody pays the trolls any mind. 
at all, you know? And that's all I'm saying. Make sure that you guys stay aware of this war that is about to be raged. Do you think Diddy and his keepers are going to let that mofo go down easily, especially when everybody else is dependent on them? They're not. They're going to pull out every dirty trick they can. Baby, if the Kardashians are, and again, these trolls, you pay a premium for them. Don't even respond to them. Block them. Do whatever. Just ignore them. Because think about it. If the Kardashians are paying people just to be like, oh my God, Kim, you look so amazing. You know that Diddy is paying people to be like, why do you do that? Do you do you guys find it odd that in the last day, the same day that Stevie J comes out and it's like, it's just because he's a black man. The same day Misa comes out and says that. Don't let them weaponize our race against us. The same way. Now all of a sudden there's this groundswell of trolls that are basically saying, how dare you go in on black men? What are you talking about? When everybody knows the difference, we are talking about predators. They are doing this on purpose. And I guarantee you over this next week, when you read the comment sections, you will see all of a sudden there is this weird podcaster incel vibe to protect black men by protect black men why because i believe they are trying to get black women to rally around diddy save diddy or at the very least you might be able to sway public opinion enough that potential jurors when they go to court are like well maybe it wasn't that bad believe what you believe don't listen to me do your own research but when you see people commenting things in the section in in the comment section when you're like wait what how? Know that probably when you go into their profile and when you look at what they comment on Twitter, on this, on that, they're on some dumb shit and they are, are not a real person. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, right? Um, Where are we? Uh, Also, I want to say thank you to Stacey George. You said just waiting for Diddy to be officially charged. I got some tea on that. I'm waiting for my sources to come back. But I think we have a time frame for when Diddy is going to be charged. And also, if his team is in New York working on his criminal defense right now. Also, you dig. Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. We have Megatron. Megatron says Passport is a Diddy plant. Probably sitting here because you cooking, doing numbers. Megatron, you know what? Yeah. I listen, it's troll probably paid. It's weird that now it's this whole thing. It's sick. And it's sick to me that if my uh, suspicions are correct, Misa, we already know Stevie Day is a dirt bag. <sighs> dirt bag. But Misa and all of them are also participating. At the end of the day, you know what they say about something in America, at least, that cuts across race, color, creed, religion is money. There is solidarity. And when people start aligning with people that you're just like, this don't even make any sense. You need to actually follow the money. Because in America, when you follow the money, baby, you can find where all the bodies are burning and buried. Amsterdam Bud, thank you so much for the super sticker. Also, we have Ellen, Elena27 said, Ethiopia Haberman is wearing white nail polish and a Bill Burke cover. I'm not saying that means anything because y'all probably will find a few summer photos of me with white nail polish too, but that's because it just be popping in the sun. But so funny, white nail polish, Diddy, you making the connection is Elena. You making the connections uh, really quick. I'm always seeking. Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Also, Winifred Allison sat most black billionaires eat, eating out of the devil's ham. You know what? I, I, I you know what though? I refuse. I don't know if anybody can become a billionaire, honestly. So honestly, I'm going to leave that there. Shannon H., thank you so much for the super chat. Maja Key said, am I wrong? But who remembers when Stevie couldn't get Diddy to claim him when he was on Love and Hip Hop? I remember that. Must have been a lover spat. Pamela Grant, thank you so much for the super chat. Said, love your take on everything. Oh, thank you, Pamela. And Joe Davison, thank you for becoming the newest member um, on YouTube. What else is going on, right? Um. Yeah. So listen, uh, yeah, listen, I don't, this is the only people Diddy can get to defend him. Stevie J said, you ain't never witnessed. Are you saying you was in the bedroom, sir? Are you saying you was about it? Living, you got a man living in your house 
defending you. It's given OJ Simpson and what is it? Cato Kalen. And I'm, we're not getting into whether OJ was guilty or not. I don't want to indict that world. But remember that guy that was living in this house? Stevie, Stevie, shut up. I need Jocelyn to come out and speak on Stevie. Even though, did you see those pictures? Uh, those old school throwbacks of Jocelyn chilling with Cassie. That's how long Stevie been around Diddy. And if Jocelyn was chilling around Cassie, and we know what Cassie and Diddy was in, baby. Yeah, exactly. Everybody, with, isn't that funny? Who said that? The court, the court of public opinion said, everybody witnessed everything. But isn't it funny? Ain't nobody seen nothing. And the only people that was witnessing things were things that are on Diddy's payroll. Baby, listen, we don't, Diddy has maintained his innocent. Nothing has been either verified or um, uh, debunked right in the court of law and diddy says he will have his day in court but baby you gotta think you gotta think you gotta think also joe davison thank you so much for becoming a youtube member let me see how many likes i get on because i swear to god if there's less than five thousand likes i'm getting off let's see oh wow oh my god you guys surprised me i have four thousand four hundred and forty two likes oh my god you guys are spoiling me unfortunately that's less than five thousand so i'm gonna have to go i'm just joking <laughs> All right. So where, oh, before I go, let me just read you guys this really quick. I'm going to make separate videos for this um, just so everything doesn't get confused. But yo, look at this, right? Here's what I want to know. Um, I wonder what Eve thinks of Stevie J now. Wasn't that her old boo? He scared her so bad. She literally said, I ain't never coming back. And she found a billionaire over in London and said, that's it. Y'all ain't never seeing me again. I wonder what Eve got to say, right? Uh, I wonder what Eve got to say. Also, really quick, um, where are we at? Oh, that's what I wanted to read to you guys. So I saw this interesting article, and I'm going to make a separate video about it. But since y'all are here, and I got how many likes? Oh, yay! I have 5,000 likes! <laughs> Thank you, guys. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Shannon Gonzalez, thank you so much for the super chat. Okay. So, right? Thank y'all. Y'all know I was just like pretending to hold y'all hostage. Y'all know I wouldn't have got off just because of that. But let me just say this before I go. Do you know how you know that it's just going down um, with uh, Diddy? Because y'all might have already heard it. But baby, y'all talking about protect black men, even white Hollywood's around about to go down. Do you know that Ashton Kutcher is expecting a subpoena over Diddy's blank trafficking probe? And Mina Kunis has banned him from speaking to Diddy months after the couple were slammed for supporting convicted blankist Davey, Danny Masterman. Y'all, if you guys don't know, Danny Masterman's lawyer was Sean Hawley. Sean Hawley is now also currently representing Diddy. Diddy got like four or five lawyers on his team. And this is the best they can think of getting dirt. Why would you even want a dirt bag like Stevie J speaking for you to TMZ? Why would you want Misa, Hilt, and Brim, who, don't get me wrong, we respect her, but we all know like fall where the money is, right? And at the end of the day, what she's saying don't make sense. You got Kamora Lee. These are the best people. Kamora Lee was married and defended Russell Simmons for the longest. Even after the charges were filed, he literally, she literally, according to Russell Simmons, tried to hide money for him. The thing is, they ended up stealing it from him. But you get, it's good. It's Listen, they said Ashton won't be showing any public support for Diddy. Um, he's expecting to be subpoenaed over uh, Diddy as part of the blank trafficking investigation. Let's also not forget, you guys don't remember that Diddy and Ashton, I believe in 2009, made headlines, headlines, because they threw the most legendary white party in Diddy's place that anybody has ever seen. This was so much, it made people blush. Even as far as Diddy's white party freak off parties went, it was one for the books and Ashton Kutcher co-hosted. Let's not forget that. They are saying that they are next up for the subpoenas. If it spills into Ashton Kutcher, that means that all of Hollywood is going to be um, uh, implicated. They said regardless of Ashton's long history with Diddy, he's distanced himself from Diddy since Cassie's lawsuit. 
Mila's not letting them be a part. Let me tell y'all something about Mila and Ashton Kutcher. Y'all remember how their good friend Danny Masterman was accused of not just remember one, two, but 50, 11 people. And there were all these women that had horrible things that happened. That's what I said. You can't just because somebody made your favorite album, makes pretty kids, stars in your pretty, your favorite show, looks good, whatever it is that makes you soften your heart to them, reminds them of your brother, your mother. You say, I don't know. You need to close your heart to it and actually look at what the actual facts are. Because just because Diddy was dancing around and he seemed like he'd be really cool to party with, if these rumors can be, well, not even rumors, accusations can be believed, he is a monster. Yeah, you know, Ashton and Mina Coolness from that 70s show. And you're like, whatever. Let's not forget, Ashton was rumored to have started dating Mila when she was 14. Let's also not forget that Danny Masterman, who was a serial, serial bunpa, right? While he was on trial and going down and Sean Hawley was letting him go down in flames, they secretly wrote a letter to the judge saying, Oddly, Sean Holly, is this you putting Stevie J up to this? Saying, surprisingly enough, we've never seen him do anything. He was always a joy and a delight. Defending this serial artist and then got mad when it was exposed to the public. Then got mad when it was exposed to the public that they had wrote that letter. Mind you, this is after he had gotten convicted. He had gotten convicted. So they can't even say, oh, well, we thought he was innocent. He had gotten convicted of all the crimes. And then they wrote a letter to the judge saying, oh, but he was such a good coworker. We love him so much. Good. And that letter got leaked. And they got mad that the letter was leaked saying it was an insult to their privacy. You can't trust these Hollywood actors. I'm not saying that everybody in Hollywood is evil. I'm saying that it's e easier for evil to prevail because everybody is acting a different way is what I am saying. Everybody, we think they're nice and sweet. We find out they are the devil incarnate. Do you see what I'm saying? Anyway, um, that was Ashton and Mila. And then they literally did a video in front of it looked like an old barn, but you found out it was a multi-million dollar just playing in our face. De uh, Ashton, then he was on some council to end child blanketing, right? And they made him step down because you literally, after a serial blanket was convicted, you begged the judge to go easy on them and not give them any time just because they were your friend. And like Stevie said, I never saw anything. He was always so sweet to us. He would never do that. Using their celebrity to take a predator and put him back into the open. Because at the end of the day, just like Misa, just like Kamora, just like Stevie. Well, Stevie, I think, actually is one of the predators. Just like everybody else that defended him. Mila and Ashton were happy for these young rising starlets with stars in their eyes to be preyed on by their good friend. Because as long as it didn't affect them, as long as it didn't affect their son, their daughter, they didn't care. you got to start thinking about people and just basically their selective outrage, people and the way that they're self-serving. They only care about things when it comes to them. They only care about black issues when it comes to them. They only care about women's issues when it comes to them. They only care about child issues when it comes to their children. Really quick, I also want to say, um, also, some tea on Ashton Kutcher, just so you know the type of uh, person that Diddy was hanging out with. Do I still have that? Um, Oh, this is some good tea too. Hold on. Let me just get this up. This is some really good tea. So why was uh, Ashton, uh, Ashton Kusher protecting Danny Masterman? Again, these are all, them and Diddy are like, right? Why was he protecting him? Well, let's also not forget uh, that early in, where are we at? Okay, hold on. Ashton was also involved in his own little cover-up that Danny Masterman um, uh, helped him cover up, okay? And people are saying that that's why Ashton was so loyal to him. Uh, hold on. Let me get this up, and I'm sending out messages. Of course, y'all know me. Okay. Send. 
So there was a thing where uh, Ashton Kutcher uh, was going on a was going on a date with a girl, right? And it's a little fuzzy about what happened, but basically he discovered the girl he was supposed to be going on a date with was deleted when he showed up there. Okay. Um, he, for whatever reason, right. He was supposed to go on a date with a girl and he showed up at her house to go on a date. Okay. Uh, and the date was found deleted. Okay. They said that she he saw what he thought was red wine spilled on a carpet. So he walked in and he saw that girl and he thought it was red wine spilled on the carpet. Okay. He then called Danny Masterman for whatever reason about what to do. And Danny Masterman told him just to leave. So he left. Okay. And that woman the next morning was found deleted at her home by her roommate. So again, they went and they checked and they said that he told a jury on Wednesday that he was freaking out after learning that a young woman was found deceased in Hollywood the day after he called, he called, he went to her home for a date. He had to testify about that. He said he arrived at the Hollywood bungalow a fashion design student, Ashley Ellerman, on February 2001. He had spoken to her by phone earlier that evening to arrange a date. But when he got there, two hours after the call, he said he found lights on and the door was locked. So then he went and creeped through her window, okay, and said he saw what he thought was red wine spilled on the carpet. He said, I didn't think anything of it. He figured he screwed up by showing up late and assumed that she had gone out with a friend. The next day, her roommate came up, uh, showed up and saw that she was actually deleted. He learned what had happened to Ellerin. He said he was freaking out when he spoke to police and he knew his fingerprints would be on the front door of her home. Now, um, mind you, Michael Garagilio was on trial in Los Angeles Superior Court for the murder of Ellerin and two other women and the attempted murder of another one. He was arrested in 2008, but he said that he didn't um, do anything to Ellerin. And I believe, right, he, Ashton was at one point a suspect because his fingers were all over the doors. And there are reports that he actually called Danny Masterman about what to do. And Danny Masterman told him just to leave. It's a little fuzzy, but then 30 years later, he's writing, or 23 years later, he's writing after Danny Masterman was convicted of serial warrant. He's writing him and Mila these letters begging the judge no. What I'm saying is I think all of Hollywood might be actually filthy and uh, disgusting is what I'm saying, right? I, listen, let me tell y'all something. I, How do I say this politely? If y'all don't shit y'all dumb asses up, not y'all, but the people in the back telling me how to pronounce Ashton Kutcher, I'm telling you that a man tried to get a serial rapist off of doing time and releasing him back into the general public. I'm also telling you that the same man was um, not involved, but it was really shady what happened between him and a woman he was supposed to be going on a date with uh, winding up dead and him saying he thought it was carpet, uh, wine juice on the carpet. And y'all want to sit here and give me grammarly lessons? Y'all, find God. Find Jesus. Y'all are really, I can't, not y'all, but the people, y'all need to find God. I swear to God, there will be, we could be in the middle of a rapture with locusts descending down. And somebody will be like, oh my God, locusts are falling from the sky. And in the middle of the rapture, there will be people being like, um, I believe it's descending. Fine God, for God's sakes. What is wrong with y'all? I pray for humanity sometimes. Anyway, 
Makeshift Samantha said, wasn't Misa and baby Justin in Suge's studio, though? What does she truly know? She might know more than what she's saying. Angelica Vacqua said, Mark Garagos, the lawyer from the OG, uh, from the Jonathan Odie interview, is doing rounds on Legacy News and said the feds are moving too fast. His partner, Ben Misalas, also mentioned, uh, has been silent on this. A very popular YouTube lawyer. I know that's right. Uh, S-O-N, thank you, son. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Faye Love said, you're a smart lady, T. So that's all. Thank you. And Access Entertainment, thank you so much for the super chat. But yo, this is interesting too. When they say that the feds are moving too fast, they are not joking about that. Listen, listen, listen. I'm just saying, but the rapture, actually locusts are descending. Wow. Can somebody add something to the conversation? I like, I see nobody has anything well, not y'all, but people just don't have. Oh, listen, mixed chick Samantha said Kim K unfollowed Diddy. Possible tip off the Diddy. Kylie throws a party and Tory Lanez gets locked up, leading to deportation because he won't talk. Canada might be in this too. Also, the Kutchers don't take baths. They don't look like they take baths. I'm being serious. Oh, wait, they actually did admit that they only take baths like once every week or two weeks or something like that. Talking about they don't get dirty. I know you think you don't get dirty, but our noses tell us a different story. <laughs> I know their housekeepers be mad. They probably, you know, when people be real funky, they don't even know. They be like, literally like, like there, why is body odor even stronger than like, you can plug in 20 air fresheners, Glade apple cinnamons, and that stuff still be wafting over. And because they got the money, their housekeepers are like, no, no, you smell mm, like roses, right? And they don't even know, just walking around funky and dirty. Come on, we don't even need it. We don't even smell. That's what your paid employees tell you, not with anything else. You know, that is a funny thing I will say about Kim K and uh, the tip off. Uh, Kim, now we don't know she tipped Diddy off, but it is funny that she just quietly, for no reason, unfollowed Diddy. And that is literally uh, 24 hours before the raid went through and Diddy wasn't home. Again, coincidence, it's odd. Why would Kim K uh, unfollow him out the blue when they've been so cool for so long? You know, listen, listen, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> somebody said, lift my arm, talk about some. Yep, I'm good. Tell me I'm not the only one. When I smell somebody with really, really bad BO, you ever smell somebody's body odor so bad, you start thinking, wait, is it me? Did secret uh, fail me? And you literally, oh, guys, okay, thank God. You ever smell so bad, you're like, have I been forsaken by secret with a pH balance? Have I been mistaken by bitch of shore? Please. You'd be like walking in and smell so bad. You're like, let me go on the right and get one of those minis to always keep in my purse. Anyway, y'all, listen, it's been great. I'm going live three times tomorrow. Make sure you guys turn on your notifications and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. And thanks for joining me. And thank you everybody for the super chat. And you guys, thank you so much for the likes. I know I'd be clowning y'all a lot, but Thank you so much for looking out with the likes and for subscribing and notifications. I really appreciate it. All right. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.